Hi everyone, so today we're going to start with organic chemistry and before you're able to do any kind of question in organic chemistry, there are a few things that you will need to uh, be familiar with. So it's going to be about the fundamentals and the organic world language. So this is what we'll be looking at. This might be uh, a few notes for you to take down. You can uh, use the handouts that I sent you on Google Classroom to follow through. Or if you want, you can take down uh, a few important key points in your copybook. So organic chemistry is the chemistry of carbon compounds. And in an organic molecule, you should have carbon, hydrogen that are covalently bonded together, as well as you can have other elements like oxygen, chlorine, sulfur, nitrogen. These can be present. And organic chemistry studies biological molecules, for example, proteins, DNA, fossil fuels, synthetic materials like nylon, plastic, Teflon, domestic and industrial products like paint, detergents, glue. These are all organic molecules and they contain carbon, hydrogen, covalently bonded as well as uh, other elements. Now carbon is a very specific uh, kind of element because it can form four bonds. So it has a valency four. Therefore, it can form up to four covalent bonds and it can form extensive, an extensive number of compounds because of that four covalent bonds. So it can combine with other elements and eventually so you end up with a huge number of compounds. You also have silicon in that same group and silicon as well has a whole chemistry uh, behind it. And both silicon and carbon can form chains and rings, and they called catenation. So the ability to form chains and rings is called catenation. But uh, the the chemistry around silicon is uh, less extensive than that of carbon. So it's the most, uh, it's the element that is able to form the largest number of compounds. That's why you have one section of chemistry dedicated completely to it. Let's see the terms that we'll be using in this chapter. So hydrocarbon, uh, these are things that you should be familiar, in, uh, familiar with uh, since our GCSE. So a hydrocarbon is an organic compound made up of carbon and hydrogen only. So hydrocarbon, hydrogen, carbon. Not all compounds, however, that contain carbon or carbon organic compounds, for example, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, um, metal carbonates. These are not organic compounds. So for it to be an organic compound, you should have carbon and hydrogen covalently bonded. And you can have other elements as well. But when there's just carbon and hydrogen, it's called hydrocarbon. And these are all organic compounds. And these are not. Saturated is when there's only single bonds. Unsaturated is when there is double or triple bonds. Aliphatic is when there is a single chain, there is no ring. Arene is when you have a benzene ring. So benzene ring looks like this. So you have six carbon atoms. We'll look into more details about the benzene ring, but basically, this is what the benzene ring looks like, where you have six carbon atoms joined to each other, and then you have one hydrogen to each, and then in the middle you have a delocalization of electrons. We'll see that in more details. So whenever you have something that is attached to the benzene ring, so here, this is an arene, okay? An electrophile, electrophile is electron liking species. So anything that likes electrons or negative charges is called an electrophile. So an electrophile is itself positive because for it to be attracting negative, it has to be positive. 
or it should have the partial positive charge. So these are examples of electrophiles. If you look at Br2, Br2, so Br, Br, here you will have a delta minus on this Br and a delta plus on this Br. So this one, because it has a partial positive charge, can act as an electrophile. So electrophiles, they are going to be small species that have a positive charge or a partial positive charge. Nucleophiles, they are negatively charged small species or they have a lone pair of electrons and they are going to be attracted towards species that have uh, a positive charge or which are electron deficient. So they are going to be attracted towards positive charge, so attracted towards nucleus. So these are examples, so negative charges, and a tree has the lone pair of electron that is going to be attracted towards the positive charge. Free radical is an atom or a molecule that has unpaired electron in its outermost shell. They are very reactive and these tend to react with substances to pair up this uh, unpaired electron. And they are represented, that unpaired electron is represented by a dot. This is too big, actually it's represented like that. So Cl dot, H dot. So it's an unpaired electron.